So you purchase a new thermostat or you're thinking about purchasing a new thermostat to replace your old thermostat. Maybe you want to go Wi-Fi, smart, or you're just tired of the old thermostat and you want something new. Stay tuned to this video and I'll show you guys exactly how to replace your old thermostat. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dealing It Yourself. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about thermostats. If you ever wanted to update your thermostat, whether it's old, it's not working, or you just wanna get a new smart thermostat, this is the right video for you. In today's video, I'm gonna be upgrading my old thermostat with this new Ecobee 3 Lite. Now, um, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to use this one, but if you have another preference, I'll also have some links in the description where you can uh, find some of these other smart thermostats. Since I'll be replacing this thermostat and I don't know what's going on behind here in terms of the wires, I suggest you guys watch my video if you haven't already, talking about all the different colors of wires and what they represent and how they work. Um, I'm gonna walk you through the steps uh, to install a thermostat and hopefully we'll run into some problems that you may have, that way we can troubleshoot them together but I'm gonna go over all the steps that it takes to install a thermostat from start to finish. So stay tuned um, and follow along and we'll get this thing installed in no time. Now, let me get some stuff out of the way. Um, I'm gonna be installing the Ecobee 3 thermostat. I'm not sponsored by Ecobee, but it's just a thermostat that I like to use. Again, I'll leave a link in the description to all the tools and all the parts that I'm using in this video in case you guys um, want to use the same stuff that I'm using, feel free. And also, if you wanna jump to a specific time in my video, I'll leave a timestamp below like I always do, so you guys can jump to different parts of the video if you're having problems in specific parts of the install. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. Before we begin, let me say first off, I'm not a licensed electrician, um, and we are going to be dealing with electrical in some capacity. So if you guys aren't comfortable, I would recommend calling an AC technician or an electrician if you aren't really comfortable with it. However, we're gonna play it safe and all the stuff that we're gonna do here, uh, you guys can do it at home. It's no big deal. Um, I wouldn't worry about it, don't panic. I'll go slow, take my time, and we'll have this thing installed in no time. Since we'll be dealing with electrical, um, I like to tell everybody, uh, if you do have a breaker for your air handler, um, go ahead and turn the breaker off. Sometimes your breaker may be in your electrical panel, but in some cases, the breaker may be right on the front of the air handler. If you have this style, it's not a big deal. Just turn the power off before you guys start working on your thermostat. All right, guys, here we have our thermostat. And the first thing we want to do is we want to remove the cover of the thermostat. Now, most thermostats are only held in place by clips and the cover is just connected to the backing plate. So normally we can just pull on your thermostat and the cover comes right off. So we'll remove the cover and set it aside. As we can see in this case, this thermostat is powered by batteries. So um, I'm assuming that this thermostat isn't going to have a C wire connected. And I'll go over that in a little bit. But again, I went over that in my video. You guys should check it out where I talk about the different color wires and what they represent. Anyway, no big deal. We're gonna set the thermostat aside for now. Okay, the first thing you wanna do when you remove your thermostat is you wanna take a picture of this. The reason we wanna take a picture is that we want to make sure that whatever wires that are connected to the terminal correspond to the color of the wires uh, below. So you're gonna make a note here. We can see that our RC, which is our red wire, or G, which is our green wire, or Y, which is our yellow wire, and the white, which is our W wire, are all connected. So we're gonna go ahead and connect them back just like this when we connect our new thermostat. However, we do notice one thing is missing here, and I'll let you guys know this before you start. If you're installing a smart thermostat, the chances are we're gonna to have to have this C wire connected here. The C wire powers our thermostat, um, the smart features, and it is what the thermostat needs to maintain constant voltage to the thermostat. So 
As you can see, we don't have a C wire here. So that's our first problem that you're going to run into where you remove your thermostat, all the wires are here, but you're missing the C wire that's connected. So the next thing we want to do is we want to remove the wires from the terminals once we've taken a picture of it, and we want to remove the backing plate from the wall. As you can see, the, the backing plate is only held to the wall with two screws here, and our terminals here have screws which we just need to loosen and pull the wires out. So let's go ahead and remove all the wires and remove the backing plate. Now that we have our wires removed and we our um, backing plate removed, we can remove any cover plates that you may have. As you can see here, the, the wire is in a um, single gang box and we have all our wires here. Now, one of the first things that I notice is that the opening is very large. You may not have this opening as large as this. You may just have a hole in the drywall where your wire comes through. But the first thing you wanna check before you start putting it back together is if your uh, backing plate will cover this box. Now the one that comes with the Ecobee is very small. So as you can see here, if we were to mount it, it's, you're still gonna have gaps on this side and this side. Luckily, we also have a cover plate that also comes with the package. Now, if you guys have one of these with your new thermostats, then you can go ahead and use it. If not, they always sell some on Amazon or in a local AC supply store where you can find one that will match the thermostat that you're trying to install. So if you need a cover, that's going to be your next step. If you don't need a cover, then you can skip that step and you can go ahead and start doing the mounting of your backing plate. All right, before we start mounting our backing plate, one of the things we want to check is our wiring. Now, if you remember, we have our red wire here, our green wire here, our yellow wire here, and our white wire here, but we were missing the common, which in most cases are, is our blue wire. Now, sometimes when you pull your wires out, you can see, like in this case here, they have a blue wire here. They just wound it around the, um, the four wires and they didn't use it. So what we can do is we, if you have this, you can go ahead and loosen the blue wire and you're gonna to have to strip the end and have it ready to go when we go to install it in our backing plate. Now look, sometimes the blue wire is cut here, so you may have to peel back the insulation on your wire to check if you have a blue wire to be used for the common. Um, and if you do, then you're in luck, we can go ahead and use it. If your thermostat doesn't need a blue wire, then we can, you can skip to the step where we start connecting these wires to our thermostat. So now that we found a blue wire here for a common, let's go ahead and strip it and get it ready to install. Okay, with our wires now all stripped and ready to go, we can go ahead and mount our backing plate. Now look, in this case, the Ecobee comes with one with a level, but in the case that you don't have a level, what you'd like, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and, you know, put your plate somewhere on the wall where you want to have it mounted and you're going to want to put a level. Um, you want to put, you want to mark a point for your two holes and you want to put a level to make sure that they're, uh, basically vertical and then you would draw a line where you think you want to mount it and you know that though that line is level and then you can go ahead and mount it but in this case we are have a bubble level here with our ecobee so we're going to go ahead and use that now i'm going to show you guys um, a little trick that i like to use now most of these kits come with mounting hardware but i like to use these uh, drywall anchors they're pretty easy to use. Each one can hold up to 50 pounds, so we know that the thermostat isn't going to go anywhere, and they're really easy to use. You only need a screwdriver to install this. So the way it works is, let's tuck these wires away. The way it works is you want to mount this. You want to place this where you think you're going to mount it. 
make sure that it's level. And once it's level, we can go ahead and mark. It has a little tip on the screw here for the drywall anchor. We can go ahead and make a mark on the drywall here and we make a mark on the drywall below. Now, what we're going to do now is we can remove this and basically what we'll do is we'll just screw this drywall anchor in using a screwdriver. The same for here. One thing I noticed is that if you see here and here are my drill points, they're so close to the box that it's not going to have any room for the anchor to actually catch on the drywall. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to move my mounting plate up a little bit. And what I'll do is on the bottom hole, I will use a long screw. Since this is a plastic box, I'm going to put a long screw through here just to hold it to the box securely. So what I can do again is I can mark a point where I want to start and go ahead and screw this drywall anchor in. As you can see here, we screwed it in and it's nice and flush. So what we can do now is we can put our backing plate on with the first screw and pull our wires through. The important thing here is we're not worried about getting it level yet. We just want to have it secured to the wall. So we can go ahead and start our screw just so we can have it um, sitting on the wall. And then we'll go ahead and pull our wires through the hole. All right, we just want to make sure we have all five of our wires through so we can count them here. One, two, three, four, five. All our wires are through. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and level our backing plate and tighten up our screw. Well, like I said, I'm going to use a long screw in the bottom at the end, but for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and tighten the top screw. I like to finish the screw with my screwdriver just because I don't like to use my drill sometimes to get it too tight. It might over tighten the screw. So what I'll do is I'll put it nice and snug and level. Right now, my backing plate is snug and I'm ready to put my thermostat on. All right, now we can go ahead and make our connections to our thermostat. The cool thing about the Ecobee is that the pins are, um, the terminals are, um, have these little push tabs here. So all you need to do is push the tab and slide the wire in. And the thing you need to notice is that we want to connect our red wire to the RC terminal here. That's the only tricky thing about this, but I mean, it's not that tricky. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with our red wire and we are going to push it back a little bit and the original wires were a little bit long so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and cut them a little bit just so that i don't have too much wire exposed inside the thermostat so what we do is we'll push down on the tab slide our wire in and it pinches it that's good Next thing is our G, which is gonna be for our fan. I'm gonna also cut that as well. There we go, it's a little bit better. There we go. Um, we're gonna, next we're gonna do our yellow wire, which is for our compressor. And here we can see we have Y1 and Y2. Now, in this case, we're just gonna to connect to Y1 because we only have a single compressor. So chances are, we're gonna connect it just like we did when we removed the thermostat cover and we saw the connections. Next, we're gonna connect our C terminal. There we go. And last but not least, our white wire, which is for our heater. And again, we only have a single heater, 
So we're gonna go into W1 to make that connection. All right, now that we have all our wires connected, we can go ahead and tuck them back inside the box just to get them out of the way and keep them out of the way from being pinched when we put our thermostat on. All right, guys, now we have all our wires connected here. Um, the last thing to do is we're gonna put our screw in here and we're gonna put our thermostat on. But before we do that, if you remember, we found our C wire that was not connected to our thermostat. So before we put on our new thermostat, we need to make sure that the C wire is connected inside of the air handler. So we're gonna go inside the air handler and take a look. We're gonna find our C wire, make sure it's connected. If it's connected, we're good. If it's not connected, we're gonna go ahead and make that connection so that our thermostat can get the power from the air handler. All right. Typically, thermostat wires are going to be located in the top part of your air handler here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by removing the screws that are usually located around the perimeter and so we can remove this panel. Once we have the panel off, we can go ahead and set it aside. All right, once you're inside your um, air handler, I want you to notice you're gonna see a bunch of wires in here. Now, I'm gonna show you an easy trick to find all your wires so you don't have to worry about being overwhelmed. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna find out where our thermostat wire came in. And now you can see here, this is the wire coming from inside because I can see the blue wire here, which is for our common and it's wine it's coiled up around the rest of the wires inside here so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to loosen my blue wire notice it's not connected to anything notice now that we have our blue wire it's not connected so now um, i trace the thermostat wire which is here and you can see all the colors the white the green the red the yellow and they're all connected inside here. So now I just find my blue wire. The first thing I wanna do is strip my blue wire so that I have a clean connection here. And the next thing I'm going to do is find out where to connect it. Now the easiest place to connect it, to find out where to connect it, is to trace your yellow wire or the wire going to your compressor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my yellow wire, which is here and I'm going to find the wire that's connected to it from outside. So now, this wire I know is coming, this is my thermostat wire here, which I'm okay with, and that gives me my blue wire. And now, I have another wire that's connected to the yellow wire, which goes outside. Usually it comes in um, with two connections. So. First step, find your yellow wire, which is here, and then look to see where your thermostat is connected, which is connected right here. You can see the yellow wire is connected to this bigger yellow wire. So that tells me that this is calling for the compressor. Now I also see this wire connected to it, which tells me this wire goes outside to my compressor. Because this one goes into my thermostat, this little one, and this big one is on my transformer. So I follow this wire here and notice this wire splits into two. So this white one that's connected goes outside and so does this one. So what you always do is once you trace the wire, connect their common to the, to the other wire going outside. And you can see here, I have a wire nut. I just loosen the wire nut. And connect my blue common cable from my thermostat to that wire as well. Make sure your connections are nice and snug. You don't want the wire slipping off. But once you have your blue wire connected, which is your common, connected to the common here, um, which is connected to your 
uh, compressor outside. Now you have your blue wire connected and that's it guys, you're done. Now we have our common connected here and our common connected in th inside of our thermostat. So now we are complete. What we'll do is go ahead and put the panel back on and we can go inside and finish our connections to our thermostat. Make sure that it's working and we are done. Let's recap. We made a connection to our C wire here, which we found in our box. And I showed you guys how to make the connection inside the air handler. So now we have everything connected the way it was originally. Plus we now have the C wire here. The only thing we have left to do now is to go ahead and put on our Ecobee thermostat. The way this works is it just has the pins lines up with these pins here. So all we do is we put it on, line it up and push it into place. Now, once we have our thermostat connected, the final step will be to turn on our breakers. And once we turn on our breakers, the thermostat will power back up. Once we have the breakers switched on, you can see our thermostat is starting up. As your thermostat is booting up, it's gonna take a little while to get fully um, up and running. And in the meantime, you're probably gonna to wanna to have it set up with an app and get it paired with your Wi-Fi and go over all of that. But most of that is gonna be in your instructor's guide. You can follow the manual and do that. I may address this in another video, but for now, um, you've done the hard part. And basically what we've done is I've showed you guys if what to do if you're putting in a thermostat and you have no C wire. Um, in this case, there was the C wire was in the box inside your thermostat um, box, but it was not connected. So we went over the steps installing it inside the thermostat and inside the air handler. So if you guys have this problem, this is the solution for it. And hopefully this video was helpful and you guys were able to follow along without a problem. Once again, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, subscribing to the channel and taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Uh, if you haven't already, please go ahead, hit that thumbs up or hit the subscribe button so you guys can follow me and be aware when I put out new content. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.